Welcome back to the Adventures of a Disney Dad podcast. My name is Matt Brandover, and I'm a dad of three and the founder of adventuresofadisneydad.com and a travel agent with the Magic for Less Travel and your host. I'm joined by my co-host, Chip Robinson, soon to be a dad of five. Chip, how's everything going tonight? Oh, it's going well. We had a little parent-teacher conference action tonight, and I just got home about an hour ago, so ready to podcast. Yikes. And you guys got another game tomorrow night for the Madison Tigers, right? Yeah, we play uh, Warren Harding. They've, they've they've been really good over the past. Like that's they've got like a bunch of like four NFL Hall of Famers from there. Wow. Um, but it, it this week and then it, it gets to Christmas week next week. Christmas week against McKinley. It's a national game, so we'll, let's get go. through this one. Get through this one, then we'll talk about that next week. And the Maslin Tigers are seven and zero. Eight and zero. Eight no, love it, love it. I can't wait to watch you guys march to the playoffs. This week we're going to be talking about the best month to visit Walt Disney World. It's a fun topic. It's something that we've written a lot uh, about recently on AdventuresOfADisneyDad.com. Lots of articles with guides about uh, which month is best to go to Walt Disney World, the benefits, the cons, all that kind of stuff. So you can check those out if you have a few minutes. But Chip and I are going to talk about our top three months. We're going to start three, two, and then one. Before we get into that, Chip, there was some some pretty big Disney news this week. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. And it kind of goes to what we talked about on the podcast last week, if, if you had a chance to listen. And that's like the overall Disney health of the company type of stuff. The, the first update that I think park goers care about the most is that if you have park hopper tickets, you're no longer going to be required to wait until 2 p.m. to park hop. Chip, what what are your thoughts on that news? I, I think it's a pretty positive change, something that people had been asking for quite a bit. What do you think? What are your thoughts? I'm actually a fan of it. We didn't get park hoppers the last time, but this summer I think we're, we're, we're talking about it. And it may not be so much for the the 2 o'clock. It's just the more or less, all right, if we want to switch, like the kids aren't enjoying one park and we want to go to back to another one um and honestly i'm more of a fan that if we're staying at you know say we're at beach club and we want to take the monorail and we'll just walk through epcot to go to magic kingdom versus getting on a bus i'd rather do that because i love the transportation but the bus sometimes is full so i think it's more of a steal for that i know it changes a little bit for annual pass holders but there, there's that's specific details but that, that involves you not me <laughs> but i i'm excited for me, I, I am an annual pass holder, but like my, here's my spiel with park hopper tickets. And I, I say this, this is what I do with my family. And it's the same thing I would say to guests. I love park hoppers. We always buy park hoppers. It's just the flexibility. You, if you aren't planning out your days well in advance and really thinking through like all the things you're going to do at one park, it's nice to be able to be flexible and say, Hey, you know, this is a good night for the kids to do the fireworks. And maybe it wasn't a night we were planning on doing the fireworks. And when you have little kids, you have to have that flexibility. And it, it really makes it a lot easier to like plan your late nights or your early mornings. Because uh, frankly, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to want to spend a full day at Animal Kingdom. And my kids aren't really the kind that are going to want to spend a full day at Epcot. So we really like to be able to go in there for a half a day and then bounce back to the resort for a little bit and then head over to Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios at night, catch Fantasmic, catch Happily Ever After, or just head over for a few rides. One of my favorite things to do is to stack Genie Plus when we have Park Hopper. So we'll go in the morning somewhere and we won't use the Genie Plus lines. I'll basically just be banking them for whatever park we're going to go to in the evening. And all our Genie Pluses will be stacked up after like 4 p.m. So like from 4 to 7 p.m. we'll have five attractions all ready to go back to back to back. And I, I really like doing that. I think Park Hopper gives you that flexibility. The 2 p.m. thing never really bothered me that much. No. I, I like I, I when I go on solo trips, I've like gone to Hollywood Studios in the morning and then popped over to Epcot for lunch kind of thing. So I could see myself wanting to go a little earlier over to Epcot and eat a little earlier for lunch. But 2 p.m. is not that late. I mean, you're you're not getting a ton done at one park in the morning before like 11 and then, you know, needing to itch to bounce over somewhere else right away. 
I just don't think that that made a huge impact on a lot of people, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. I think, you know, there were people that wanted it and Disney stepped up to the plate and made that change. The big thing for me is food. We might want to mm-hmm. go into Epcot to get breakfast. But our park, we really want to be at Hollywood Studios. I think that's and and that and then dropping also the the park reservations. Now it could you could have a bus roulette at the end of the night. I'm not, I'm we've done that before. We said, hey, let's get on the next one because we don't want to wait any longer. Yeah, and and I think that that's a a great thing to do, and it, it just opens up the flexibility. But anytime I have a guest that's on the fence about Park Hopper. I'm always an advocate for it. I think it's a it's a great option, especially for families with kids. So that that to me is is a net positive. Here's what I love just as a business nerd about the way this all played out is, you know, they give a little bit of a good nugget that we know Disney fans are going to like. And then they stuff in on the back end a bunch of price increases. And I, I talked a little bit about it on Instagram. If you follow me there. I am kind of happy that they had price increases because the theme over the last few weeks has been the parks are empty. Disney's desperate. The 50% discount for kids tickets for 2024 came out and all you saw in the news and on, on X formerly Twitter was Disney, you know, they're desperate for visitors. They need all these people. They, in my opinion, you don't raise prices like they did in this scenario unless you have the demand to back it up. And so to me, it's, it's a good health thing for the parks. And, you know, we've talked previously, there's been a lot of growth in the parks area. I don't think the parks area is hurting. What we'll talk about individually, some of the price increases, but just generally speaking, what do you think about the fact that they increased prices? Were you upset? Did you care really that much? I didn't think it was too bad. I mean, annual pass, the, the, was it the credit or not incredible? Is it incredible pass? Yeah. Incredible pass what went up 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. That's a lot better than a hundred dollars of what it was doing for the last couple of years before that parking. I know went up a little bit, which listen, if you're staying on resort and you're driving, you don't pay for parking anyways. So right. that's, it's, it's, it's really putting a, putting on people that are staying off site or just driving in for the day that it's really putting it on them. So it doesn't really affect me at all. Have you, I have really, you bought your annual pass yet? Cause you are DVC now, which is the new I'm thing not, for you guys this year. Are you it's, planning it's a, to buy an annual pass? It's it's a discussion up for debate with my wife and I. So being a family of six, I would have to buy six of them right now. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, no, I'd have to buy five. So it's well, one the of beautiful that, thing is you can go to adventures of a Disney dad.com and use the new calculator to figure out if it makes sense for your calculator. family. But it's taking but, advantage of my wife one night to look at it. So <laughs> there, there you go. It, it really is a math equation, right? And sometimes like in my family, I have one and the rest of my family doesn't. Obviously there's, there's work reasons for that, for what I do as an, as a travel agent, but sometimes it makes sense for even just one person to get it because then you can get the dining and the merchandise discounts and the room discounts, which can be huge. Like there's a ton of 35% off room discounts for annual pass holders. And not everybody in, in the room needs to have an annual pass, just the lead guest. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, you can get the benefit of having it for one person and then you can just buy the tickets for the others. If you're like on the border, on the fringe, which, you know, may end up being something that works for you, but the discount doesn't matter as much since you've got DVC points and, and things like that. But let's, let's talk about a little bit about the prices. I, I agree with you. Like to me, I don't think it was anything that moved the needle. Now at Disneyland, if you're a big Disneyland fan, the, the daily prices went up pretty like some of the the days there are expensive so what, um, what, what is that go over that I, I actually looked at disneyland the other day <laughs> so the the disney runs their ticket pricing daily it's it's variable rates right so every single day is different based on disney's calculation of how popular it's going to be and the rates per day went up now there are more days at disneyland this year than they've had in years past that the price is like the lowest possible which i think is 109 a day, if I remember correctly, but you know, the rest of the prices are kind of moving up towards the higher end and we didn't see any price increases on tickets at Walt Disney world yet. Yet. I say, yet. (laughs) I, I, I I think that there would be a lot of pushback from that. Bob Iger talked about it historically that, you know, they, last year they raised prices aggressively. 
But what they did raise prices on at Walt Disney World this year is parking went up five dollars. That doesn't bother me because it's in line with Universal. Universal is also thirty dollars. I think SeaWorld's thirty dollars too. And then they raised the price of Memory Maker. That one to me is interesting. Like they moved it from one sixty nine to one eighty five, I believe. So not a huge increase. And I think Memory Maker in general is a steal. It, yeah. Do you use Memory Maker chip? What every time. Every okay. time. I think it's it's one of those that it's hard to say, like if you go for like two or three days, then maybe not, but if you're there for more than four days, it's you gotta stop and the pictures are worth it. I mean, but I would I pay two hundred dollars. I've I've done the we forgot to book it early one time. <laughs> you know, we've had to pay Oh more. yeah, we paid for it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's definitely I think paying for it after your trip has started has also moved up to like 210 or, or something right around there. But memory maker to me is a steal. You do have to be mindful and like, remember to use it. Remember when you see the people walking around in green, taking the photos to step up there and take some for us, it comes with annual pass. So we don't have to buy it anymore, but previously we always would. And I, I always recommend it. The The price increase doesn't really bother me because you do get the value. Like when you walk in magic kingdom, those photo pass photographers are everywhere. Yeah, They're everywhere. And there's not usually huge lines outside of a couple spots. You can usually, you know, pace it through your trip and find good times to sneak in there and get some photos. Plus you get all the ride photos, which is great. So I, I, I think that that's, you know, worth it. Genie Plus at Disneyland, I think went up to $30 and can be bought in advance. And... That's it. We, well, the price on annual passes went up also, and that was across the board. But, you know, that doesn't hurt a whole lot of people, and the price wasn't that big of an increase. So, yeah, we'll I see. think I, I'm int- I think they're going to raise the Disney ticket price, but I don't think it'll be that dramatic. But it's, it's one of those that if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. So I expect it every year. So if they don't do it, then I'm happy. I I agree there. And again, I think it's a positive thing for the health of the company. So we're going to move on from the Disney news this week. And we're going to jump into our first big topic for this week. And we're going to talk about the best month to visit Walt Disney World. There's a, a lot of debate about this. And before we get jumping into our rankings, I think it's really interesting. One of our listener questions for the day that was submitted by Katie that I think kicks off this topic really well is do you pay attention to crowds or use crowd calendars when deciding when you will visit Walt Disney world? Chip, I'm going to kick this one off to you first. What, what is your process with thinking about crowds when you're trying to decide when you're going to go? It's not so much the, the month or the time it's, it's, it's the, what park of the day I look at the crowd calendars. I look at about four or five of them actually. Saying, all right, a Monday, what is it? It's like set the weekend, Magic Kingdom's hot, and Monday's hot at Magic Kingdom. And then, so we'll try to avoid those. But then Epcot on Sunday is the best one, and Hollywood Studios on Saturday is the best one. It's, it's just one of those that I just try and look at the this is statistical side of me that says, all right, this is where it's been normally. So, it's and you're usually that, looking at those like, like right the week before your trip, I assume, right? Or oh, are you I, looking I, way I, in advance? I've already looked at them for this summer. <laughs> All right. So so he, so here's where you and I may like butt heads a little bit. I I think crowd calendars in general, especially the ones that you have to pay for, are like the biggest sham in the Disney community. And it's, it's partially because Disney builds in a real cal- crowd calendar based on their own data by the ticket pricing. Yeah. They, they, you know, the, the tickets each day are higher on days that are going to be more popular. So Disney knows what to expect. They literally give you a crowd calendar based on the pricing. That said, like the the data that they're using to create these calendars on the various different websites is is just usually wait historical wait time data and historical park entrance data, which you can find for free on Thrill Data and some of the other websites. And it's just to me, it's just not that reliable. And it's even less reliable if you're looking like a year in advance. So uh, while I, I think you get, I think you look at it more because you like to nerd out about it. Like I do about certain things. Oh yeah. And you, you get really obsessed and intense in your planning. 
but there's certainly no reason for somebody going to Disney for the first time to pay somebody for a crowd calendar, because I think for the most part, you're going to be disappointed and it, it's, it's just not, you know, that reliable and you're going to want to pay more attention to like the week or two before your trip, talking to your travel agent or looking online and really seeing like what the trends are at the parks, the wait time trends and things like that, I think is going to help you a little bit more. But for the most part, you know, if you look at guides on specific months or specific holidays, you're going to get a much better understanding of what the crowds will be like when you're going to go or when you're considering going. And we know, Chip, we've talked about this before with 4th of July. Sometimes it all just goes out the window. Yeah. You know, you, you'll have 10 straight years outside of, you know, the COVID anomalies of specific, like you can expect these kind of crowds on 4th of July or specific holiday weekends or whatever. And then you'll have one year where it's just empty. Like there's no explanation for it. And people try and explain it. And there's really not. It just happens every once in a while. So the worst thing that you can do is pay for something like that and then end up being disappointed. Well, um, I don't I don't pay for any of them. I just kind of look at mm-hmm. like, all right, so this week's kind of a better week. Maybe we'll want to focus more on Magic Kingdom early in the week. And that that's what I look at is and because I also then do it around my dining. Mm-hmm. All right. So what where do we go? And and that's where Park Hopper coming back, I guess. That really didn't matter because we would do it after two o'clock anyways when we park hop. But that's what I kind of look at. All right, where are we going to eat lunch? Okay, is, is this a better park day there? And being over there at the 4th of July, we went to Magic Kingdom on July 5th. And I planned that specifically because the 4th is everybody's going to want to be there for the fireworks. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, we'll just go to the 5th because everybody's going to be hopefully staying out late and we'll just rope crop it early and get there early and it was it was a great day on july 5th so yeah and and i think you know really looking at the ticket pricing and understanding that and knowing like just general historic trends like if there's an after hours event or an evening party like mickey's not so scary during the day magic kingdom's not going to be as busy there's certain little things that you can pick up on that'll help in your planning that i think can get you a little bit further than than the crowd calendars I think the crowd calendars are fine as a free resource. I just, uh, I caution people to avoid paying for them. That and the dining alerts that people pay for on apps and stuff when you can get (laughs) alerts for free. Those are the two things that kind of grind my gears a little bit, but otherwise let's, let's, let's jump into it. I think we've answered, I think it was Katie's question. Let's jump into it. The best months to go to Walt Disney World. And and we're going to talk about our favorites in the context of like what we would recommend for other people too. But a lot of this does have a little personal preference to it. Chip, what what is your what is month number three in your hierarchy? Number three is February. Okay. Um, That's an interesting uh, choice. (laughs) It is. And the reason being is that's my wife and I's anniversary. Uh, Uh, Awesome. And so we're probably going to go make that kind of a habit. But Festival of the Arts is that that's the big time. Why? Um, mm-hmm. it, it's I haven't been to it, but everything it that, that it seems like that's going to be my favorite festival of them all because it's one of the shorter ones. Um, also, living up here in north northeast Ohio, anytime I can get away from the snow and February is brutal up here. Um, that I, and I can get down to Florida, I want to take advantage of it. So February is probably my number three. I don't really have any other reason why, just that I know February is the shortest month. But up here in North Northeast Ohio, it feels like it's 45 days because it's zero degrees outside, a foot of snow half the time. And yeah. it's just a, and as a teacher, it's kind of a lull because we only get really one day off in that month. And that's was that President's Day. Every day, every other day, it's you're hoping for a snow day. Yeah. And so that's, that's I guess February. as a teacher, would you just kind of try and take a couple of days off at, at that point? Or are you navigating the President's Day holiday? No, I didn't. I would avoid it if, if possible. Now, I, I can run it up against some personal days. I can run up against the holiday, but I've got to get permission. Mm-hmm. But I'll try and ext- I get three personal days. So I'll try and take a long weekend, like leave like Wednesday night and come back Monday type of thing. And I think that, you know, that kind of gets to there's there's two different groups of people when it comes to travel, one group that will travel on holidays and one that will absolutely not. 
I feel like there's rarely people that are in the middle where they will occasionally travel on a holiday. I think you either really like to travel on holidays or you really don't. I've always been someone that won't until I saw what happened at 4th of July this past year. And I was like, I may have to like, you know, reconsider that, that stance. My, my number three is going to be October and we just experienced it. So, or well, late September, early October, but close enough in terms of weather, but October is, is going to be my favorite time, my third favorite time of the year. And I think the Halloween, the fall, it's starting to get cool enough in Florida that you're not down there like sweltering in the heat. It's not like uncomfortable, but it's also not too cold that you're having to wear long sleeves or pants, which I appreciate. There's a lot of cool stuff to do in terms of the Halloween parties, I think are a blast. So that adds in a, a different dynamic and it's starting to get cold. I love the fall in Chicago, but I hate the winter. So to me, it's just a, it's a fun thing to kind of bounce down to Florida, get a little bit of heat right before it starts to get really cold and enjoy it. And I I think the crowds are pretty moderate for October and there's some cool things you can do. Like I said, when you've got a not so scary Halloween party in the evening, you go to magic kingdom that day and and you're going to see a little bit lower wait times. I think that's what we've seen so far. And the the parks are really just decorated really cool in the fall for the Halloween stuff. So I, I really enjoy that. So October is definitely my number three. Chip, let's move on to number two. What is your number so, two month? So number two and number one are one A, one B for me. Okay. Number two, number two is <laughs> you said the end of end of a month. I'm gonna take middle of May to the middle of June. <laughs> oh <Ooh. laughs> sunburn. This, this Uh, I'll take it all day. I'm a ginger. I'll take the sun all day. So the reason being number one, being a teacher um, right after school, like I want, like I'm looking forward to the time where it's the last day of teacher day. I I leave school and I go get on a plane and fly to Disney. Maybe that happens this year. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. You haven't. The school's out throwing the papers. Oh yeah. Just like I'm heading straight to the airport. I want to see that MCO carpet as soon as possible. Kind of thing. Correct. And that that's, that's kind of why. And it's also, I don't think it's as hot. It gets hot in July. Trust me. It gets hot. It's hot all the time. I'm sweating no matter what, but (laughs) when I hit there, it just feels like summer. It reminds me of my childhood going in the summer. You get the pool action. Uh, Maybe it's your first trip of the summer before you go somewhere else in the, later on to the beach or something like that with family but also you're kind of getting that that flower garden festival flower garden just, festival is gorgeous and the, also, the garden rocks concert series oh yeah. i did that this year and it's it's a blast it's a lot of and fun. you were down you were down there in may right june it was june, beginning yeah. of june yeah yeah the other thing is it's it's quiet it's then... not as busy. it's not as well i'm saying that's why i said middle of may all right yeah. so you're getting you that, can definitely that, find that. pockets where it's quiet in in those two periods for sure. And then, and like DVC points wise, that's a very very good time to go because you can use points for cheaper than you can any other time. So that's why I picked middle of May. It it's gonna be hot. It's hot no matter what when you go, but it's just I think it's a little quiet. You get the festival. That's I've, I've been booking a lot of guests recently. The first week of June. And it seems like, and and all of, I think all four that I've booked in the last two or three weeks that were in that June period where the first week of June, they want to go as soon as school gets out. They're all going on their first trips. And the thought is they don't have to take their kids out of school and they're going to be able to get in before it gets really hot. Well, and so you, I think you also, you've got something there too. When you get out, if you go right there at the beginning of time, you're going to avoid all the, the north northeast of uh, United States people that are still in school. Uh-huh. Um, Florida, I think Florida's in school till about the second week of June, too. So you're I kind can, of I can see it. I don't know that for sure, just, but I, I can see it. You're just hitting that that lull where all right, you can you can get in there before everybody gets there. I think that's Yeah. The and you you also, you know, the the other thing at Walt Disney World that people don't consider is there's a lot of tournaments at ESPN Wild World of Sports in the summer. There's a lot of soccer tournaments, a lot of AAU basketball, a lot of cheerleading. 
And if you can get in before that kind of kicks off, especially if you want to stay at somewhere like Coronado, where they tend to put a lot of those teams, you know, you're, you're going to see a different experience. And, you know, you have to think, keep in mind, like for people that really love Disney Springs, you want to avoid those tournament times because they're usually staying at hotels around Disney Springs. They're not going to the parks, but they are flooding Disney Springs in the evening, you know, for shopping and stuff like that. So there's definitely different things you consider there. My number two is, is December. And to me, we, we talked about it a little bit last week where you are going to be a, a November 1st Christmas tree guy. <laughs> I, I love Christmas and I love the decorations. I really miss the icicle lights that they did on the castle at Walt Disney World. The first time I ran the marathon, they still had them up at the beginning of January and it was oh, like sweet. It was a really, really cool emotional experience. This was my first marathon running through the castle and it's just completely lit up at, you know, six in the morning or whatever. And it was, it was really, really fun. It, it gives me like all the nostalgia feels. And I just saw the new ad. I, I think it was the new ad for Disneyland today has the, you know, the gondolas and it's a Christmas ad. So those are starting to pick up. <laughs> the snacks and stuff. I'm really excited for the new parties that they've got. The Jollywood Nights. Jollywood Nights. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm not going in December, but I am going down in November and the parties are starting. So I'm going to try and catch a couple of those. I'll be going down solo for the Magic for Less. I'll be spending the majority of the time at Universal. Well, you're also going for Adventure to Disney Dad podcast too. Well, that, that too. I, I, I think we're, we're going to have to do a, a live episode that week. So we'll, we'll do something fun. But the, the parties, the, they keep innovating around Christmas, which is really cool. And they're just doing a lot of really fun stuff. So I, I think, you know, if you want that like typical like family excitement, nostalgia, gorgeous decorations, the resorts are are absolutely done to the nines for Christmas, all the trees. There's just so much other stuff you can do outside of the parks to go and check out in terms of decoration. So I, I really, really love Christmas and I love December. So that would be my number two. Chip, drum roll. What, what's number one? <laughs> December. December is number one. Ah, there you uh, go. I stole <laughs> you your thunder a little bit. We did not talk about this in advance. We did not, no. So actually, my wife and I talked about she she rearranged our living room to figure out where the tree's going. So I love it. Um, I love it. It'll probably, I can't it'll do probably, November 1st, but I love it. It'll be up. You'll see it. It'll probably be right behind me. So one of the big reasons for me, December, is I don't have to go to the parks. I right. love all the decorations. Like I, My dad was down there the end of November, beginning of December last year. And he's like, ah, oh, you got to do the Christmas party and all this stuff. And I was like, He's like, so he didn't enjoy it, but I'm like, but then he texted me and said, what resorts do you recommend? And I sent him to like three different resorts. And he said, oh, I didn't need to go to any of the parks. Like you could have just right. sent me to resorts and I could have saved myself a couple hundred bucks. So Wilderness Lodge, Gorgeous. my wife doesn't want to stay there unless it's at Christmas time. It's gorgeous. She, yeah. And then the tree, the fireplace. I mean, we went in uh, July over there and she was like, Oh my gosh, can you imagine this at Christmas? That's the first mm -hmm. word she said as we walked in. And then you go over to the Grand and you get the gingerbread house. And then you go to the beach club and you get the carousel. And then you go over to, what's the RV park or the, the camp campgrounds? Mm -hmm. People set up for a month and they, yeah. they decorate it. I mean, December's the best month to go. The weather's phenomenal. You're going to get some cold, which, okay, I can wear a hoodie and shorts and that's that's my kind of weather. Right. It's, it's and you can find pockets of really good pricing in December too. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, the, the concern I think you have in terms of pricing is usually the flights around Christmas. Sometimes they can get a little expensive, but the, the hotel pricing can be and the ticket pricing can be pretty reasonable. Especially uh, which I you, think is surprising that, to people. That's like the, the 14th through like the 20th, right around then. As a teacher, I've looked at going then and use my personal days then because, but the problem is we have exams right around there. So I try to, I got to be there for that, but I've considered it for going in that middle of December. That's the, the quietest, quietest the park is. Right. If you look at, if you hey, look at the, look at the data, 
um that, that that week in december that first week in december is like the quietest it is so december is my number one I, like i said it could have flipped you could have been the middle of may to june or whatever you want to say but december just for the christmas alone and all the parks all the parks eat up to, to it animal kingdom has stuff epcot has stuff i miss the osborne lights and if you don't know what the osborne lights are go spend like 10 minutes on wikipedia and read through it dude it's the story behind it's phenomenal it, it is it is really cool and and december is definitely up there for me too it's it's definitely my number two and and i do want to reiterate like there's just there's just so much to do outside of the parks in the month of december that you're not going to see in in june so if you're a roar we didn't even talk about the, the trees over at disney springs the the yeah the christmas tree walk is gorgeous I mean, there, there's really just, there's so much stuff to do outside of the parks. And in June, you don't have that. So if you're a resort hopping type of family and you like that kind of thing, it's it's a really cool time to go. And I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, my number one, and I'm Chip, I'm sure you probably knew this was coming, is January. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we, my family goes every year in January. So there is there is a little bit of like, I, I don't want to use the word nostalgia, but like getting into a rhythm or, or a habit or whatever of going in January every year. My biggest thing is the weather is usually pretty perfect. We've had a couple of years where it's, it's a little cold, but it's like one day and it pops through. And at worst you're wearing, you know, jeans and, and a hoodie to the parks, which, you know, can be great. Right. Like yeah. sometimes it's better to be in jeans and a hoodie walking around Walt Disney World with lower crowds um, because it, it can just be more comfortable, especially if you're from the Midwest and you're kind of used to it a little bit. And it still feels better for those of us that are leaving a foot of snow in Chicago and wind and coming down there. You know, a high of 70 is a breeze, <laughs> you know, so. I, I, the other big plug for me is marathon weekend. It's always the first full weekend in January. I highly recommend if, if anybody out there has never done a run Disney event, try it or even volunteer at a run Disney event while you're down there. They do things differently. I've run Chicago, the Chicago marathon twice, which is a fantastic race, but I've, I've done Disney twice, Disney marathon twice. Also Disney does it different. It's just, <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. There, There's not a better race in the world, in my opinion, if you're going to run than a Disney race, especially the shorter ones, because you don't get shorter races that have the theming and the running through the parks and the, the crowds, the volunteers, like everybody's really pumped up. And there's a there's a buzz in the parks that whole week. So anytime you're walking around, you're you're kind of feeling the energy of all these runners and their families and they're excited, they're nervous, all these different things. And that kind of gives you a little something when you're going through the parks too. But the cool thing is like, we talk about kind of looking at the data and, and crowd calendars and stuff like that. During marathon week, runners are not in the parks late at night. No. So, you know, you, you may see like certain restaurants are popular for runners for different reasons that week. You know, it's somebody doing the Dopey Challenge wants to meet Dopey at Artist Point or whatever, so it's going to be impossible to get. But you're not going to see runners swamping the the Magic Kingdom for Happily Ever After the night before the race. So you can kind of see some lower crowds. Are there there's some traffic issues in the morning because the races are going on? But if you're taking Disney busing, it's not a problem because they know where they're going and they've got specific roads. And the pricing is is usually pretty awesome too. Like outside of needing to be early for marathon weekend, January is a great time to get good pricing and good discounts. For 2024, the big plug is like everything starts January 9th. The <laughs> dining plan starts January 9th. The park hopper that we just talked about starts January 9th. And the reason they're doing all, all of it January 9th and not January 1st is because of marathon weekend. So they're avoiding that you know, group of people when they're starting to do all of this stuff because the rooms are full and, and whatever else. So January is cool. I, I, I love it. I advocate for it to any, any chance I get, you don't have to take the kids out of school usually. So you can get in there and winter break. It's definitely like to me, the most underrated part of Disney vacation planning 
is getting somebody to go in January. And I would even say February too, Chip, to, to go back to your number three. Like those are some really good times that people may not think about. You know, you give your kids the Disney trip for Christmas and then you pop down two weeks later and, and you're having, having a blast. So. And and I will say this, we took our cruise this past year over present or not over Martin Luther King. So in January, Mm-hmm. Um, but we were going to go to the parks then if we didn't take the cruise. So I'm with you. Like it's, it's a perfect time to go. Even if you want to butt it up against the holiday, it's not terrible. They say it's terrible, but it, it, it's, it's not terrible. And listen, if you can't shovel humidity, you can shovel a foot of snow. You can't shovel <laughs> humidity. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so true. And, and one, one of the things to that end, like the first week of January, you still get a lot of the Christmas decorations up. Yep. Some of them have come down, but like the castle's still decorated for Christmas. So you still get all of that, you know, that kind of feel and that post Christmas vibe. So I think, I think there's a lot of fun. January is definitely my number one and I, I will sing it from the rooftops. So let's jump in. Those are our top three. Let I want to throw a little curveball at you, Chip. I, I didn't ask okay. you this question in advance or, or mention that we were going to talk about it. If somebody came to you, what's the one month that you would say, I don't know that I would go to Walt Disney World in that month? Now, I want to preface this by saying Chip and I, like we would go to Walt Disney World, I think, any any month of the year. And I think we could find arguments to make on behalf of any month of the year. But if you had somebody that said, I'm going to give you a trip to Walt Disney World any month of the year, which is the one that you would not pick? Spring break week. Um, so, I took so, somebody <laughs> last night for, for spring break next year. Well, I'm looking like I even looked at I might go to, I looked at going to Disneyland for spring break just because I think it's not going to be as busy as if I go to Walt Disney World. But I would avoid like that March, April, be, right at the beginning of May because that's when you get spring break. That's when you get all your competitions, your dance competitions. You start getting baseball stuff going on. And you're going to start getting those like March, March and April, probably the two months that I would avoid because of spring break. Cause you're going to get college spring break. You're going to get high school spring break. And then you're going to start getting into the competition season. Um, those are the only two real months that I would say avoid. Um, August is probably a steal of a month. If you're willing to deal with the heat, if you're willing to do it right at the beat, right before school starts, if you're, if you start school late, August is a steal month, but, I would say stay away from March and April, like mid March to mid April. Yeah. What and, about and you? Again, what would you say? Well, let, let, let's just say again, we can make arguments for March too. Like we're, we're, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So like this is like, you know, choosing the best of 12 pints of ice cream or whatever. Oh, I might, <laughs> I might go on spring break. Don't give me wrong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, know, you might see me and Chip doing a live podcast, just the dads <laughs> and the, the kids and the wives are at home. But, for me, the the one month, like if if all things considered, someone just said, it, you know, just eliminate one of the 12 months. For me, it would probably be July. It, and it's just because it's too dang hot. And <laughs> like, like July is also a fun time to be at home for me. Like I love playing with the kids outside and having the sprinklers going and going to the pool and doing fireworks like the fireworks for us are right in our neighborhood the city fireworks so we can walk down to the park and watch them from there and it's a lot of fun so those few things like now i'm not gonna pass a trip to walt disney world in july i and i like i said i went this year in in june so i'm not afraid of the heat and i'll do it (laughs) But that said, if, if a family came to me and they were asking if you could eliminate one month, that would probably be it because it's just just too hot. But that that said, like, there's a lot of people that have that viewpoint. And sometimes that can mean that the crowds are lower. So, you know, it, it goes goes kind of with it. So let's jump into our next segment. We're going to do our typical every week we do this segment called Would You Rather? And we've got some fun questions here. Would you rather spend a day at Magic Kingdom without riding any rides or spend a day at Epcot without sampling any food or drink? Chip, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Dude, this one, this one that I, I, I struggle with. Um, it was a harder question than I anticipated. 
And I still don't know what my answer would be. <laughs> you know what? I would probably say, oh, I'm probably gonna say Epcot. Like I would, I could, I, I could do that. Like that's doable. I can sit there and ride, ride rides and just not eat there. Um, because I can go sneak out to the boardwalk. I can sneak out over that way, go over the Riviera. Uh, the problem with Magic Kingdom is, what am I gonna do all day? Like I don't know if I can just walk around Magic Kingdom and not like go into Carousel of Progress, not go into Fill Our Magic or something like that. Like, so yeah. I, I started thinking about this, and I, I realized like I've done this before. <laughs> I've gone to I've <laughs> gone to Magic Kingdom and not ridden anything. Oh, so, <laughs> but I I've never I've never gone to Epcot and not had any food. Yeah. And you know my my favorite thing to do while at Disney World is to pop over for dinner or lunch just at Epcot to get tacos in Mexico. I'll get a talk, ta- get tacos and a, and a margarita and pop out. <laughs> like that's all I need. Yeah. I'll just eat dinner there and leave. So I I've been, and, and again, that's solo. I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff when I'm with my kids and stuff because it's too much walking and, and too much of a hassle. <laughs> yeah. It's way, way too much to do. So, you know, that's something to consider if you're doing like an adults only trip or something like that. But I have been to Magic Kingdom and not ridden anything because I'll go there, eat corn dogs at Casey's and hang out and watch like a parade or a show on Main Street. And then I'll pop over, grab a Dole Whip and then kind of do a little bit of a loop by Haunted Mansion and come back around, just kind of enjoy the sights, people watch a little bit. And then sneak all the way back around to Tomorrowland and then pop back out or hang out until the fireworks. So, you know, that's something that I, I've done. I've done it before. <laughs> and again, you know, these are this is for me solo. Now, how, would I answer this question differently with a family? Probably, it would probably be going to Epcot and riding rides with no food. And yeah. that, like, I can't imagine being able to take kids to Magic Kingdom and not do anything and just, you know, Correct. just eat. And that, like, and, and that might have been my thinking. But the other thought was, like, just walking around, like, you're going to want to, like, go into Country Bears or, or sneak in. And, and you know, like, I go in the summer, so I'm going to need to get that shade. And I can't yeah, just sit you are. there and you're even get on the boat, the river boat. Um, that's why Epcot. I think I could do, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make probably make people mad here. So we were, we were down for Flower and Garden this year at Epcot. We didn't go to one food booth. <laughs> we just went. So to, we I'll, went to, I'll, we went I'll second country. that. I, I've, I've, I've done the same thing, and uh, and there is one story I wanna, I wanna tell really quickly, just because it was probably the my favorite thing that's ever happened to me, like outside of family stuff at Walt Disney World when I was down in June. It was the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival, and I was at Magic Kingdom, and I I did just pop in to get dinner, and then I was planning to get some ice cream and watch the fireworks. That was literally my plan. And I popped in, and I, I get my Casey's corn dogs, and Chip, you and I went to high school together. For for those that don't know our background, so I've I've known you for a really long time. When I was in high school, I loved the band Simple Plan. Do you remember the oh, band yeah. Simple Plan? Oh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Right in our so, era. And and it was it really was our era. Like they were they were like huge stars when we were in high school. And I was I was a big big fan. And I'm get my Casey's corn dogs and I'm standing at one of the tables right next to the piano. And a lady comes out and it the park was fairly crowded that day and and all those tables at Casey's were packed. And a lady comes out and she's got like three or four kids with her. And one of the Disney employees is with her and they like are looking for a place to stand or sit and they can't find any. And I'm standing at a table by myself eating solo. And I was like, Hey, you know, you guys can come and stand here with me. I'm, I'm just by myself, you know, take the table as much as you want. I'm just, you know, I'm almost done. And they said, thanks. And they joined me and I'm I'm talking to the kids and, and talking to this lady. And then her husband comes out. And he comes out to join them and he stands right next to me. And I go, holy, 
Correct. <laughs> it was the lead singer of Simple Plan and his wife and kids with a VIP tour guide from Walt Disney oh, World. Nice. And he could not have been the nicest guy. And I and I said to him, as soon as he as soon as he walked up to the table, and he said, you know, thanks for you know letting us crash, you know, your table or whatever. He was very polite. And I, I said, I've got to tell you, I'm I'm a huge fan of yours. Like I've been a huge <laughs> fan since I was a kid. I, I immediately recognized him, and you could tell, like other people in Magic Kingdom could not have known who he was. Yeah. Come to find out, they were they were doing four days of shows at the the Garden Rocks concert series. Yeah. So you know, he asked me, "Had you been to a show?" And I was like, "No." And he was like, "We're playing tonight," you know, because they were playing every night, and it's free. So. After I got done eating, I popped over to Epcot and went and watched their show. And they did like a 45 minute set. So they did three concerts every day for four days. Yeah. Which is nuts to me. That's like, crazy. you know, with, with how hard those guys work and stuff like that. But he spent a lot of time with me explaining like how cool Disney hooked them up, you know, as VIPs. He met his wife at Walt Disney World. So they've got a long history of like they performed there for a really long time, like since back when we were in high school. And it was it was like it was just an, a really awesome experience for somebody that absolutely nerded out for getting to hang out with a rock star for 20 minutes. <laughs> eating corn dogs. Like it's it's one of my favorite bands and in my favorite place, eating my favorite food. And it was just, it was really cool. His kids were awesome. So shout out to to all of those guys. Cause sometimes I think you, you never want to meet your heroes. I think is, is the story, right? Like cause yeah, they're yeah. going to be a prick or whatever. And they could not have been a better experience. So now well, I'm. They're relevant now that they, they are a TikTok sensation with their songs. So <laughs> yes, they, they are. They're huge now again, and they've got a new album out. So like I I've met, like my two biggest celebrity meetings have been at Disney. I met Kobe awesome. Bryant at Disneyland in 2008 oh, wow. when he was there. I don't know which kid it was at the time, one of his older children, which was uh, an awesome experience. Back then we didn't have cell phones on us all the time that could take pictures and everything else. I wish I did, but <laughs> that was really cool. And then, and then this simple plan thing. So it falls right into this question because that night I literally ate, with him, went and got some ice cream, hung out for a little bit, and then popped out and went to their concert. So that's awesome. Uh, that was a really cool, really cool experience. So our our next would you rather would you rather experience a rainy day at Walt Disney World with no crowds or a sunny day with maximum capacity crowds? Rainy day. Rainy day, no question. Yeah, I I, I think so too. We, I, I we think do a question like that. I feel like we asked. We that we did one where like it would rain the entire time that you were there. Oh, um, right, right, or right, you right. couldn't go in the shade. Yeah. I think was the question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that. I'd go with the rain. I, uh, the max crowds is. Ugh. Yeah, really it's the max crowds that that changes that question. So that that one's a short one. But yeah. let's hop into our next segment um, that we do weekly, which is overrated or underrated. We talk about one food item, one resort, and one restaurant, and we tell you whether or not we think it's overrated or underrated. Something for you to consider for your next trip, whether or not you want to check out these spots. The resort chip we're going to talk about first. This one might be controversial. <laughs> Grand Floridian. Overrated or underrated? I think it's overrated, mostly because of the stereotypical. We actually might stay there. We, we've talked about staying there this, this upcoming summer just because it's on monorail um but when we first walked in it my wife was like we, we're not we're, we're not classy enough to stay here like that was her initial statement it's just i think a lot of people way. feel that way like and, uh, and watch the videos on youtube and it feels almost like grandma's house like you just but i will say there are very good things about that the restaurants are great like the soap washing place in there is pretty cool their pools are awesome it's on the monorail loop it does have good things. I just think it's overrated because if you look at the price, it is ridiculous. Like, I, 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 I think mean. that's that's what you have to consider is that, like, based on the price, to me, the Grand Floridian is overrated. Now, 
if you look at some of the things that like I, I think our age group feels that way um and, and maybe our generation and the younger generations you you might feel like it's a little on the stuffy side or like you said the the decor and the design may not be our style but the you know the the big thing for i think dads to consider and families to consider is the spa and that that's huge right now because a lot of the spas at other disney resorts aren't open it's they, the only one open right I, I I hesitate to say that just because I feel like that kind of stuff changes so frequently that it's yeah. it's hard for me to say. But the last time I checked, it was the only resort that had a spa that was open post COVID. And I hope that they bring more of them back because, you know, I would love to be able to get my wife a massage at Coronado Springs or or wherever. But I got when we were there last January, I got spa appointments for my mother-in-law and my wife. And my father-in-law and I took the kids, you know, for the afternoon and, you know, they had to Uber over, which is is not that big of a deal, but it would be nice if we had it at our own resort. And, and they, they spoke very highly of the spa experience at the Grand Floridian. And I, I do think that like, if you're going to spend more resort time, spend time at the pools, things like that, it's, it's a great resort for families. Based on the price, I think it's a little on the overrated side. There's other options that I would consider at the same price point or lower. But the one thing that I I hesitate with here is like, I think a lot of people hate on the Grand Floridian, especially in our age group. So to me, you could, you could make the argument it's underrated just because like, I feel like there's not a whole lot of love for it in, you know, a a, a certain number of circles. So to me... I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go with that for a second. I'll go with that just because I wonder how many of those people have actually ever walked in. It is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, right. It feels very, it feels very Mary Poppins like, which it feels like that. And I think it's kind of designed off of, I, I remember seeing the resort, like something out of, oh, I'm going to draw a blank, but uh, it, it, it is beautiful inside. It, it, it's gorgeous. It is the, and I do want to feel like the full house episode. Like that's all I think about is when I when I walk in there, I see Uncle Jesse play on the piano. I see you see Michelle and Stephanie out on the beach. Right. Uh, I mean, that might be a dream come true for me, being able to stay there, <laughs> feel 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 like Danny Tanner. I don't know. And, and and that's what that's what I mean is like you know people see the pictures and they see the price and they're like ah oh, that's not my vibe you know that that's not where I'm staying and I I think you know to that extent like there's a lot of underrated aspects because there's just things that people don't know like the spa and the pools and things like that and i do love that it's not a whole lot of the in your face you know disney theming it's it's a little bit more subtle but at the same time i'm more of a modern hotel resort guy so you know that that balances the other way for me but the transportation is is obviously great with the monorail too so let's let's move on we've got this one Casey's Corner at the Magic Kingdom, overrated or underrated? It is underrated. My it man, is, I knew I could is, count on you. <laughs> it is a steal. It is the best deal on Main Street. We're not big corn dog nuggets fans, which I know they're good. I've had them before. We get the foot long hot dog. We get the ones with the the one with the mac and cheese on it, because my one of my kids will just eat the mac and cheese off of it. One of them will eat the hot dog. The cheese fries, the chili cheese fries. The fries are um, so good. They're so good. Oh, they are. It, it, it's, dude, it's, we're, we're Reds fans. You and I yes. are Reds fans. And, I mean, baseball is king in Cincinnati, where we're from. So, it just makes it, it – it's red and white in there, so it makes me feel like the Reds. So, mm. it is underrated. People uh, hate I, it is underrated. We we are officially, I think this is the third hype man of the podcast, right? We are Coronado <laughs> Springs, Rodeo Roundup Barbecue, and Casey's Corner hype man. We are stands, whatever yes. else you want to call it. To me, it's underrated. It cannot be hyped up enough. It is so good. It's it's always reliable in terms of mobile order, being able to get things quickly. The one downside is that it's like usually hard to get a seat, but the the trick there, and this is something that my family and I love to do is you mobile order the family and the kids go find a spot on the hub grass. You take, you carry the food all the way around to the hub grass and you sit there and the kids can play and run around and eat and come grab corn dog nuggets and fries. And you know, the bathroom is right there behind the hub grass, which is great. 
And the other thing that's really cool is if you ever have an opportunity to buy the dining packages or the dessert party packages for happily ever after, I highly recommend it because you get that, you know, priority seating in the hub for the fireworks show, which is, which is awesome because you don't have to waste a bunch of time, like standing around and, you know, shoulder to shoulder with a ton of people for an hour or whatever. But the cool thing is like, if you have that dessert party before the fireworks, you can order Casey's mobile order it and then take it over and sit at the tables where there's no crowds at all, eat dinner, then have the dessert and the alcohol (laughs) and stuff like that at the dessert party, walk over and watch the fireworks and walk out. It's an, it's a more expensive way to do things, right? Like the, the dessert parties are not like cheap. It's then, you know, an extra couple hundred bucks a person to be able to have that opportunity. You're mostly paying for the seating in the hub grass for the fireworks, which is, you know, premium seating. But I would definitely recommend it. It's it's a really cool experience. And it just makes it a lot easier if you've got a big family and you want to see the fireworks. You've got kids that are little that like you want to get out of there right away too. All of that stuff, you know, plays a role. And we all know that like when you have little kids, standing around for the fireworks and finding a spot to stand oh, is the worst. worst. It's It's the worst. So paying the extra money to have a spot locked in and you don't have to walk over there until 10 minutes before they start is really, really crucial and can help out your trip. So I love Casey's. I, I, I will go to magic kingdom, just to eat Casey's and, and then go oh, get yeah. ice cream. So I'll also you know, say the, the, the little spot right there that connects to the shop. That's where we ate the last time. There's mm-hmm. a little like bar right there. We, we where you get the con- there. And napkins and stuff like yes. that. Yes. We, we stood there, but you got a mobile order. That's the biggest yeah. deal. You got a mobile order that, and with the fireworks, let me go on a little, little riff here. Um, I don't wait in line. I don't wait for fireworks. I just walk up right when they're going off, and somehow I get a great spot every time. <laughs> you have the ability to move people, Chip. That is true. Which is I, which I, is I, part of it, right? I also um, look important. I don't know why people think I look important, but they're like, "Oh yeah, you go 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 in there." So, well, because you right. you look like an NFL left tackle with a nice beard, so <laughs> it it, uh, it helps on that front. But you know, I. I, I I will largely try and avoid going to the fireworks personally without the dessert party thing. Like I, I don't, if I don't have that, I don't really want to try and take the kids because yeah. it is such a hard thing to do beyond finding the spot. Even if you go early enough to find the spot, you then have to get your kids to sit still for 45 minutes, Yeah, which is like impossible. So, you know, it, it's not, it's not fun trying to do those things. And, and I like, to me, it's, it's money well spent, but they are hard to book too. Like it, it's not an easy thing to, to guarantee for your vacation. The last thing for overrated or underrated for this episode, we're going to talk about popcorn and, you know, to the side of that, the popcorn buckets, there's a lot oh. of hype around the popcorn buckets. We are, are you a popcorn totally. family. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I go movie theater style here at the house. Like I don't like I'm a okay. Wait, 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 wait. Are you a Disney popcorn family though? Yes. So okay. We are just we we get the bucket. I could give you a tip on how to do the bucket. We don't pay for the nice fancy one. We get the cheap one. But it's an easy. Oh yeah. Oh that that goes with me every single time. I don't pay for a new bucket every time. You didn't hear that Disney. But so we fill it up, and we'll fill it up in the morning. We'll fill it up at lunch. We'll fill it up at dinner. It's just one of those my kids love to always snack, and it's an mm-hmm. easy snack. The other thing that I'm I'm kind of disappointed went away was the one in Epcot that had the flavors. Mm. That yeah, that yeah. one I went looking for it when we were down there, and then I look online and it's been gone. So, but yes, we are a popcorn, so I think it's underrated. It's a great snack to have for kids, especially just that they can munch on when we're between rides and whatnot. So I'll say that like the popcorn as a snack for families is underrated. The popcorn buckets are overrated and I can't stand the obsession with like the collectors popcorn buckets. <laughs> like the people waiting like an hour in line there, there's two things that like, you know, w- whatever floats your boat. Like I, I, I love Disney stuff. I love Disney hats or whatever. Everybody has like a thing, 
but the people that collect the popcorn buckets and the people that collect the Trader Sam's mugs, like those are a different breed. Like if you're waiting in those really long lines, you got to have some dedication and be a big time collector. The, the different, like, I just need the normal bucket, refill it as much as possible. It makes the trip, you know, a little bit more affordable for snacks for the kids. So to me, the popcorn itself underrated, the buckets is a little overrated for, for me personally. But again, I, I'm a Disney merch guy. Like I, I can, everybody's got things that they like and they don't like. So not, not knocking anybody out there that loves the popcorn buckets. Now, do the fancy ones hold as much as the normal one? That's my real I, question. I don't know because I've never bought one of the fancy ones. Like, I, like yeah. I'm not going down there yeah. to try and get like you know the the carriage or like the Halloween Mickey one or or whatever. And, and again, like I can see it. Like I, I there's some of them that have been pretty cool. I'd be like, oh, I'd put that in my office or whatever. But you know, waiting waiting an hour or two in line for a popcorn bucket is <laughs> it, not. Is not going to happen for me. Yeah. Let's. We've got three other listener questions I want to get to before we wrap up this episode. Dan asks, if you have kids that want to meet characters, which park do you recommend? Ooh, it really depends on the characters, I would say. I think Magic Kingdom is probably the best to see big names. Because you can see Mickey right there on Main Street. You can see all the, the princesses, four princesses behind the castle whoever's over a new fantasy land or whatever they call it under the, the tent that's they've got characters mm-hmm. back there but then the parade and i know it's not more of a that's not a meet and greet but just you're gonna see everybody in the mm-hmm. parade so i would say magic kingdom is the best in my in my thoughts to see some interesting ones is actually hollywood studios uh, yeah if you're if you're a star wars person or pixar you know what what they're doing at hollywood studios with the character meets is really cool they've you know Woody, Jesse, Buzz, Kylo Ren, Stormtroopers, Darth Vader, Chewbacca, BB-8, Olaf, and then they've got Sully is now meeting at the Pixar place, Alley, Mr. and Mrs. Incredible, Edna Mode, Frozone. Um, so they, they've they've got quite a few. To me, the, the the big recommendation would be Epcot. I think Epcot has the better princesses. And then they've still got, you know, the, the big four are still there. You know, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy are, are all still there to meet. But you can meet all of the big princesses. I mean, Anna and Elsa are the huge draw for meet and greets at, at Epcot. But you can also, they, they, there's Jasmine, Snow White are, are all there too. So Mulan's there. I think there's a lot of really cool opportunities. I The one that I always wanted to take the kids to was Von Schweetz from Wreck It Ralph. Oh and yeah. Now she's been replaced by by Figment, which is a little bit of a bummer. So I never got to take my kids to meet to meet Von. I, I can't remember if her name's first name was Greta or not. No, but it's not Greta. It's oh my gosh. <laughs> the, the, I can it's, see it. it, yeah. It's gonna escape me too. But and, and like, there's just a lot of princesses in each one of the lands and unless you're like really paying attention to the character list on the My Disney Experience app, you may not know that they're there. And I think for the most part, outside of Anna and Elsa, all of those characters, there's never usually a line. Vanellope. Uh, Vanellope Von Schweetz. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I think Epcot to me would be my recommendation just because there's there's some really cool characters there and, and Anna and Elsa are, are great. Um, but Magic Kingdom also has a lot of really good opportunities that, that Chip pointed out. So um, that would be my recommendation. But either one, you know, you can't really can't really go wrong. If you Lindsay asks, if you only can stay out late one night of your trip, would you recommend Fantasmic or Happily Ever After? So oh, that's happily, a really good question. It's Happily Ever After. It's not Happily uh, Ever After. The, the, I have to see it. it. I have to see it every single time. Fantasmic is great. It's a great show. Don't get me wrong. It's a great show. But if I only had one night, I'm going to go see the fireworks at the castle. I'm going to see Happily Ever After. Um, Fantasmic's one of those that I don't have to see every time. I can go see it every other time. Mm. Uh, but ha- Happily Ever After, I'll watch it two times. I'll watch it three times. It's my favorite. Just seeing the fireworks. I'm, I've, I've seen it with my, my dad. I've seen it with my kids now. We're gonna see it with my in-laws this upcoming. I think my wife's gonna cry watching it with her mom. Like it, it's it's one of those that 
I don't know why. It's just fireworks. I don't get it. It's the music. It's the it's the whole thing. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's all of it together for sure. And I think you have to add context to the question. I I didn't ask a follow up to this, but if it's your first time ever going to Walt Disney World, the answer is happily ever after. If you've been once before or you've seen happily ever after once before, to me, the answer is, and you've never seen Fantasmic, you've got to see Fantasmic. And I could, I could even make the argument, like if you've seen them both, you know, then you should still see Fantasmic again because Fantasmic is a great show. And my, my wife, my wife will listen to this and I guarantee you, she's going to come out of, out of listening to it in the car and the carpool yeah, line yeah. or whatever. And she's going to say, Fantasmic is the answer to this question. <laughs> we, I mean, and, and the kids will love it too, because you get to see all the characters and the songs are really, really great. There's it's a lot a of cool action. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is a show and it's got some fire, like fireworks aspects to it, like with the water and, and things like that. But to me, the answer is still happily ever after, because like you said, there there is not, especially for, for dads and parents in general, if you like Disney or you like being in front of the castle with your kids, there is not a better feeling for me as a dad than holding my kids, watching the fireworks at Magic Kingdom. Yep. Like, you know, like, I, you know, there, there is an emotional aspect to it for sure. So I... I I, I think you got the right answer there. Last question. Christy asks, have you ever had a parenting fail while at Walt Disney World? I cannot think of one when I saw this question. <laughs> and so I, but by the way that you're laughing, I think that there's a story here. There is um, a story. You're turning a little red. So I'm sure this is going to be a fun parenting fail. So Chip, tell us about your parenting fail. I, 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 I can't think of one offhand. Let me hear what you got. So Kenzie was four. My my kids are tall. My wife's six foot. I'm six six. My kids are tall. So Kenzie's four. We're at Animal Kingdom. She's tall enough to ride Everest. Everest is my favorite roller coaster. And I say, hey, we've got a fast pass. Let's go do. Air wasn't big enough yet. So I said, hey, Kenzie, come ride this with me. And we'll do the rider swap, and then Kelly can go ride, and you can ride with her. So. We get off, we get on, and she's like, Oh, this isn't bad. We go up, and before you go backwards and all that, she starts freaking out. Uh-oh. Freaking out. She's screaming, and she's like, I never want to do it again. And she goes again with my wife. <laughs> and she hasn't ridden a roller coaster since then. And she's now uh, nine Aww. years old. So wow, it's one of those. You, that- ruined, you ruined your daughter's roller coaster experience with Everest. Well, Everest. Th- Oh, you know, it's like it's a great. It's one of the best roller coasters. Oh ever my goodness! I, but, like, but it, it's one of those that we. I probably should have said, "All right, she's four. Maybe she doesn't need to do this. It, it is kind of scary." My wife had never done it, so she's like, "Oh, Kenzie, you can go again." Because he's like, "No, no, I don't really want to go." Because like, "Come on," or Kelly's like, oh, "Come on," and yeah. so it was. It was one of those that she won't ride it again. Uh, so she's terrified. It's 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 a fail, but it's one of those that I was probably looking more for myself at the time because I love that ride. It, it, it was a parenting fail at Disney. I, I you know now that you mentioned that I had the same thing happen, but opposite. On our last trip, we have been hyping up my daughter, who's five, to ride Tower of Terror, and my wife and her brother and their entire family. You know, they grew up being obsessed with Tower of Terror. That was their favorite ride when they were growing up. And everybody in the family that was on this trip wanted Haley to be able to ride Tower of Terror. Everybody was so excited about it. But somebody's going to stay with the other two boys that can't ride it. You know, I've, I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and they're not getting on it, obviously. So we're, we're walking up, and we've got the lightning lane, and everybody's trying to figure out who's going to stand with the boys. And I'm like, I told Lauren, I was like, you know, this is your parents and your brother. They're all here. Like, this is nostalgic. It means something to you. I, I would, I'm more than happy to stay with the boys and then we'll ride or swap and I'll ride it with just me and Haley because it, it does have like something like memorable to me. Like I would love oh, yeah. to be on her first ride on Tower of Terror. She wrote it and she will never ride it again. 
<laughs> she got off and she was like, nope, 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 not a chance. I am not oh, yeah. doing it again. Not, no, no, no. We tried for the rest of the trip to get her to do it with just me. She was not having it, but she didn't like scrap, you know, Slinky Dog and, and other rides. It was just, it was just Tower of Terror. So we're still going to be working. Oh, and we ended the show. What did he do? Oh, he's going to be so mad. <laughs> oh, it's so great. I, I just lost <laughs> you. Was I gone? Yeah, you were gone. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. And I was worried that I lost the whole damn thing. But all right. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to either of us on social media or via email. I can be found at, at Adventures of a Disney Dad. Chip, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, on Instagram at, at Robinson Dad Life and then on X, Chip Robinson. And we, in the next couple of weeks, we've got some cool guests coming on the show that we're really excited about. So stay tuned for those episodes. We appreciate you spending some time with us. If you are interested in having me assist you in planning your next Universal or Disney vacation, please feel free to reach out. All of the links to get a free quote are in the show notes, or you can click get a free quote on adventuresofadisneydad.com. Our services are free to you, and we'd love to help you plan your dream vacation. If you have a moment and you could follow, subscribe, like, and review this podcast on whatever platform you prefer, we would greatly appreciate it. We know that you have a lot of choices when it comes to the content you consume, and we hope that this episode brightened your day a little bit and you had um, some fun with us. So we look forward to seeing you next time, and we'll talk to you then. See you later.